All right, class, so here we are in Lightroom Classic, and we're gonna look at um, how to export our files from Lightroom. Um, so just as a reminder, all of these settings that we have applied to these photos are just, just that. They're just settings to a master file. So if I were to again look at these files on my desktop, they would not show any of the um, s color shifts and, and settings that I have created in here. So to have those uh, final images, I need to then export my file. Now if I'm in the develop men menu um, and I wanted to export this file, and it is highlighted. So if I was just going to export this one image and it was from the develop menu, um, notice that I do not have the import export buttons here. They're replaced by copy and paste in the develop menu. So I can go up to uh, file export on the main menu and do that, might do it manually that way rather than using the button. Now you can use the quick key command, which is shift command E. Now, make sure you are uh, paying attention to the fact that it is uh, shift and command and E at the same time. Um, if you just hit command E, it is going to open the file, all of the files up and export them into Photoshop. Um, I've done this uh, when they added this feature um, to export into Photoshop. It was a little quirky uh, and wouldn't give you any warnings. And so I have accidentally opened up, you know, a hundred photos into Photoshop at one time, which was really dragged um, uh, on the RAM and it took a really long time and it was really hard to shut down the um, process once it started. Uh, now they give you warnings, but just do be aware that it is, if you're gonna be using the quick key command that it is shift command and E together. So, but normally I don't export one single file at a time. I'm usually exporting a number of files. So I'm going to do that from the library menu. Now you, I, and I'm going to flag the images. So I'm just going to go back to develop so you all can see this here. I can flag an image here. Um, in the develop menu by hitting the P button. So no other modifying keys, just click on P. And that's going to pick the file. And you'll notice that in the upper left hand corner of the image thumbnail and the film strips, you'll see that you have this little, this little white flag that doesn't exist on some of the other images. Now I have previously flagged some images that um, were for another project. So, but I'm gonna add some. Uh, now you'll see in the library, because the thumbnails are bigger, um, I can actually see a little halo when I, when I roll over this image. You can see that there is a uh, flag that's up there um, kind of on top of the number. And if I roll over it, it turns white. If I click on it, it will stay white. So I just picked that one. So you can either hit the P button or um, you can click on the uh, flag in the upper left hand corner. So I'm just going to select a couple other images that I've worked on. Um, and you can see some of them, again, already have flags there. Uh, if I wanted to remove a flag, I can just simply click on the flag itself again and it will turn it off. Now, what's the benefit of flagging these images? Well, it keeps me from, as I'm working, if I know that I like these images, I'll flag them. So then when I come into this menu, I don't have to, you know, command click on all these images and scroll and do all of that. All I have to do is go down to the bottom right hand corner uh, just above the film strip and it, you'll notice that it says filter and then I have this drop down menu that says filters off. If I click on that I can get to the drop down menu and I can select flagged. Now I have uh, this nice neat uh, um, 
only view of just the nine images that I want to export. But now I want to draw your attention down here where it says nine of six photos and only one is selected. That is this one with the lighter highlight around it. So if I want to have this, all of them selected, I can click on the first one and shift click on the last one and now I have all of them selected. And perhaps I might decide that, oh, I don't want this water pitcher and I can uncheck it. Now let's say I'm like, well, you know, I actually want to add a couple more on here. I can come back in here and um, maybe I want this water pitcher too. Um, and maybe I do want this one that I unchecked. So I'll go back and put flagged. And now I have oh, nine photos selected, um, but there are 11 out of 11, uh, 106 photos there. So now I want to make sure that I have all of them. I can also hit Command A, so the Apple menu um, symbol and A, uh, that will select all of them. Now it says 11 of 106 and 11 selected. Had I not done that, this would be the only photograph if I just had this one selected and highlighted. It would only be the image that I had highlighted that would export, so this single photo. So I do want to make sure that I pay attention and I make sure that I have all the photos that I want ready to export. So once I go into the export menu, it's going to look pretty daunting, but really there's only four places that you need to be concerned with. The export location, that is where you're telling Lightroom where you want those file, files to be saved. So what specific folder on what hard drive. Then also um, the name. So if I wanted to give this a meaningful name, I would probably start with the date and then, oops, it's the 14th and then demo files. Now, and then up here, I don't really want it in that folder. I do want it to keep it in that same main media, um, um, main media folder, but I am gonna choose another file uh, or folder to put my files in. Now, I'm gonna select this 2022 813 demo and then I'm going to create a new folder by hitting on that button on the left hand corner. I'm going to cancel that so you can see it. That new folder, bottom left. Then I'm going to give it a name, probably the same name. Demo export. Oops. And then click create. So once I've created it, all I have to do is hit choose. So I've told Lightroom where I wanted to put it. I've given it a new name. It will put it in a sequence. Now, I have TIFF selected. I probably want to save these as JPEGs, but TIFF is a great file format for printing. It has great print presets um, and a good, uh, very good um, color space that we're working with. So it's a, a lot of time the professional printers will prefer the TIFF file. Another advantage to the TIFF file is that it is what's called a lossless compression. So you do have compression, but it does it without throwing data away. And that is where JPEG can be um, a little problematic. So when you choose JPEG, make sure that you're either using your JPEG as your original image or your final image. It should never be used as a working document because it's lossless. So how does lossy or, or it is lossy? So a lossy compression, every time you save a file, you throw out data. And so if you keep saving over the same file over and over again, that, that file will degrade tremendously over time. So you want to make sure that when you're using the JPEG, you're being very thoughtful about what's going to happen after that. So this is a JPEG, um, so I'm exporting that. And um, I'm going to make sure that the quality is all the way up to 100%. Um, sRGB is uh, kind of industry standard, that's fine. 
And then image sizing, um, this is where um, you're gonna have to make some choices. If you click um, off resize to fit, that will give you the full file format for um, of, of the original file. So you're not gonna lose any data. If I wanna resize it, let's say I'm going to the web and I don't want a really big image, I might use long edge, um, which is another um, a good option because then you can set your long edge and then uh, the Adobe will set the, um, the short edge proportionally. So it, whether it's a portrait orientation or a landscape orientation, it's a good way to go. We're going to talk about resolution in another, um, in, in another, uh, at another time in another video, um, so you understand that a little better. But because um, bandwidth and everything's gotten really great, um, anywhere from 1500 to 2000 pixels is appropriate. So you can um, have that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that for resize to fit and just have nice big images because I'm not making these for the web. So I'm just going to go ahead and click export. Now just as you can see up here there I have a taskbar where it's exporting the files for me and then once it gets started because they're JPEGs um, they should move fairly quickly. Now these are big files because I didn't resize them and they were shot on a full frame camera so they're pretty pretty big files. So now as it's going through and it's exporting. I'm going to click on the finder window, go into documents, find that main media folder, and then go in and now I can see that I have all of the files that I had selected, all 11 of them, and they're all nice and neatly exported into a folder that I can find easily. I hope that helps.